All right, class, settle down and make your way to your seats. Today we are continuing our lecture series on the Keepers. We are nearing the end of this semester and we've still got some big events to cover. After leaving the Artisan's Alley with an array of new clothes and accessories for their Pokemon, Virgil, Jaquise, and Pandora are now preparing to find and investigate the home of the Gliscor and Drapion. Hoping to get an answer as to what amplified the violent nature of these dreadful beasts, Team Catapult and Chaperone have decided to investigate the rock formation near the destroyed merchant's cart and the mysterious butte that was revealed through Jaquie's visions. How have these creatures affected the rest of the desert residents? What unexpected encounters may happen as our heroes conduct their investigation? And how scary could a monster lair really be? Let's find out in our latest installment, A Bewitching Butte. Team Catapult, you all are racing toward the rock formation on the northern side of town in the Iron Chariot with Pandora. Uh, I think that you all get there pretty quickly uh, since you are in the Metagross-drawn uh, vehicle. And I remember perfectly where we're going. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's alongside the road. So, oh, absolutely. Well, I remember perfectly. <laughs> Everybody's super steel tap racing. Gonna get our face ate by a bug. So you all uh, make your way to the rock formation, and you you pull up to it. Looks very similar to how you left it the other day. What do you do? I'm gonna get Elaine out. Okay. Maybe send him over just to take a little look, see up and up and down the rock, see if there's any like caverns or outcroppings or things waiting to eat us. Nice. Well, not to get close, but you know. Yeah, to but just to thing. scope out, scope out the zone, do some reconnaissance. Yes. Uh, he looks through his monocle. Hoot hoot hoot! It glints in the sunlight. Go ahead and uh, make a perception check then. Yeah. Now is this hoot hoot making it or is this hoot hoot helping you? Oh, okay. Help. I yeah, think yeah, makes yeah. more sense. It's, I mean, if yeah. Elaine is like your active Pokemon in this scenario, then that, he can give you advantage. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. yeah okay, cool. So that's going to be uh, 16 total. With a 16, as you and Elaine are scoping out the uh, rocky outcropping uh, to keep an eye out for any awful beasties, uh, you do not see any in this space, so you feel like it is safe to explore this zone. As he is looking around at it, and as you uh, maybe start to climb around a little to get better vantage points for things, uh, as you're looking, do you actually start to climb up on it at all at this point, or are you just trying to, or are you still trying to like keep your distance a little bit? Yeah, if he's feeling like there's not like an immediate threat, then some light bouldering. Yeah, some light bouldering. Jake has athletics uh, prof- yeah, proficiency, so you know, <laughs> time to get my uh, my chalk on my hands and. Oh, yeah. You go free solo. You uh, climb up the rocky outcropping, you start looking around and everything, and as you're looking around, you do note that there's, you know, just a little bit of vegetation kind of, like, poking out just wherever it can uh, between the rocks and stones and things. Uh, There is another apricorn tree. Again, very gnarled out here. Very gnarled and, like, just barely hanging on. Hardy, hardy trees doing the best they Tom can. Hardy trees. Tom wow. Hardy trees. Tom Hardy trees. Hey, you, you want to take my apricorns? <laughs> you want my apricorn pot? <laughs> hey! Apricorn. Hey, Virgil! Yeah? There's some tall grass up here if you want to walk back and forth in a very small line in order to have a random encounter. Okay. Um... I'm going to follow up to where Jaquies is, but I am going to put Chud in his Pokeball before trying to climb. That is fair. I think that's a compromise. (laughs) It's going to happen. I I think I know better. I don't even think I try. I think it's like, that's 90 pounds and I'm not athletic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Not not the strongest lad. If and when I get up there, I'm going to take Chud out. Chud's going to be my main for right now. Nice. Um, And I would like to make... A survival check. Ooh. About the types of Pokemon that are in the area. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, also, as a note, the apricorns from that tree, it is a black apricorn black. tree. And we oh. get one uh. each. Yes, one each. Don't we get more because of your finder fees? Not in my, my natural uh, environment is forest. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, hey. This that's gnarled cool. tree atop this rocky outcropping that has these uh, black apricorns hanging from its branches. I am so pumped to be playing this game. <laughs> I know, I missed it. This it's tree a is actually Aku. Samurai Jack cast him out. <sighs> Anyone else remember that deep lore when he was a tree, a creepy, gross tree? You just brought me back like t- literally. You're 20 welcome. Years. Enjoy yes, samurai. Enjoy, enjoy Jonah's racist voice. So, Jake Lee's <laughs> with. <laughs> it was so defeated. <laughs> hey, can I make that survival check? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah awesome. You can make a survival cool check. Beans. I rolled a thirteen. And on this, on this thing, this game mechanic uh-huh. <laughs> that says trainer can make a survival check to determine what type, not species, of Pokemon might be in an area. DC 12 is one type, DC 15, two types, DC 18, three types, DC 21, four types, and DC 25, all types in area, and rarest Pokemon in area will appear on D100 roll of 1 through 25 for the duration of the catching session. That's bonkers. But I only roll 13. A 13. Right. So you know one type of Pokemon in the yeah. area. Yeah! <laughs> Ground, baby! Sweet! Gotta love it. Time to get expertise in survival. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep on taking <laughs> the feet I for expertise. expertise survival. Someone needs to make some survival checks. Uh, but so what? yeah, just gra- as Jake, I walk Jake back Lee's, and forth in like the. I'm grass. not very good at the survival thing. Oh, I'm really man. good at a lot of other things. To avoid gamification, I'm not going to do the same role, but I am going to walk oh, no, back and for forth sure, between maybe, two pixels. Maybe later. So maybe as, in another area. Gosh, uh, as you all are doing this uh, with your 16 perception, uh, as you're walking through this this little bit of you know mossy left, desert right, patch, left, left, right, right, left, right, uh, atop this rocky outcropping, uh, with your 16, you do note that from here you do have a uh, good eye line once again to the butt. The butt. The butte in the desert. I'm getting the sense that there isn't too much more on this rocky outcropping. Just this little bonus apricorn tree. Well, there there was. Are there caves? Uh, not here. In the same way that the uh, shroomish had its little like yeah, little yeah, yeah. rock hut, mm. uh, that same kind of thing, but nothing that's really like a, a cavernous uh, sort Can of thing. Can I deal. make a nature check? Sure. To see if it looks like the two things that we fought last night, mm-hmm. the Glycicor and the Drapion. Yeah. If this looks like a habitat that would be theirs or not their habitat. Mm, okay, like yeah. If our original assumption that this is where they were from is incorrect and they, in fact, are from somewhere else. Gotcha. Yeah, you can make a nature check for that. Can I take out Juniper before I do it? Sure. Yes. You're not in like a rut. You're taking time to sort of scope the place out right now. We're Detective po- Pokichu, Pokemon. Detective Pokichu. Yeah. 24. 24. Uh, with a 24, you get a. Uh, pretty firm grasp that this is probably not uh, the actual habitat of the Drapion and the Gliscor. Uh, it seems as though whatever bits of shelters and things that there are as you're looking around are not things that would be big enough to house these creatures. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, for them I assumed to... there would be a cave up here. Right, Me right. Too, but that's okay. Uh, but as I you're looking around, but... each of you just roll a flat d20. Here. Six. Fifteen. Fifteen. Since you rolled a 15, you may roll a D100. There is a Pokemon watching us. Watch it be a magic carp in a pool. I 89. Whoa. Okay. Zunes. The reason that I had you roll the D20, both of you, is because, as I mentioned before, there's not a lot of wild Pokemon around this area, <gasps> much as you noticed previously. They got eight. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've been walking back and forth and haven't had the... So I think they've all been eaten. Uh, Jay Quiz. Jonah is making a very, uh, why would you say, like a ooh, well, tasty face. Juniper is my main, so this could get bad real quick. Ooh, or it could be good, fun. I don't know. I got Arnie, or no, Elaine. Virgil. With your 89, you are, uh, as Jayquees is looking around, uh, just trying to find something in the dang old tall grass, uh, to no avail with that six. Uh, you start looking around, and you specifically are looking in some more of the uh, the hidey holes and things, uh, places where you're, you're trying to figure out if this could be the area where the Drapion and the Gliscor lived. You're looking around, and... Huddled up in one of the little tiny, tiny caverns against the back wall. It seems as though this thing might have heard you as you were coming around. Uh, and then now that you're poking your head around, you hear a... Bone! 
You see a Q-Bone. Roll initiative. Not what I thought. Not what I thought, but I am excited. 14. 14. As you stick your head around the side, it just, it, its eyes go wide under its skull helmet, no. and it goes to just, like, chuck its little bone at you. No, little buddy. I don't even want to harm him. B- bonus action. Immediate. I need to know how many hit points it has. <laughs> <laughs> I also need to know what it is, but since I think I can only ask one of those things. It would be one or the other, since both are, like, a, a bonus action. I need to know its hit points. points. It looks scared and potentially weak. Great. Go ahead and roll that nature check. 18 plus 8. Uh, it has 27 hit points. I'm going to put Juniper away. She's way too lethal for this little fella. I'm going to sit Chud down in front of the hole, like, with me. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to be like, hey, little buddy. I'm going to try and de-escalate things. Mm. But I'm taking Chud out. I-, I think it would be probably a little bit much to be like, I'm putting Chud in the battle, and also I'm adding this other action here. Right. So what I would love to say, if you're cool with it, is mm-hmm. like, I am switching Chud in, but I am certainly remaining the target of anything. Mm, okay. In order to be like, hey, it's okay, little little fella. Gotcha. I see. I see. I do, see. I do see. whatever you want. Nice. You can you can give me a concussion. I don't care. But like, um, that's what's happening. But you are the target of uh, of this thing's ire currently, Chud. For sure. uh, specifically, very non threatening. Yeah. Uh, but as this uh, this little friend was already in motion to throw oh, yeah. its little bone at you, it goes to use Bone Club. That's a fifteen plus. It hit me. It's the first time I've lost hit points. <laughs> That's insane to me. <laughs> I have lost so many hit points <laughs> for so many reasons. You take 10 points of ground damage. Ooh. As it dunk off your skull, <laughs> your human form, <laughs> your, your uh-huh. human face. But that is the Cubone's turn as it doesn't really have anywhere to go because it's in the back of this yeah, yeah, little like, sure. out, you know, outcropping this, hidey hole. I, this is the worst possible imaginable thing for this thing. And yeah. I, I don't want it to live in it much longer. Jayquees, I fully think you watch a bone club just like skip off of Virgil's head, and he's like, ah, dung. Uh, it's okay. I got this. Oh, okay. Ha ah. I think there's probably a little bit of blood. Oh yeah, <laughs> probably a little bit of blood. It broke the skin. Yeah, okay. Hey, hey, buddy. It's okay. I don't wanna. Can I make an animal handling check to calm yeah, it down? Yeah, make that an a thing? animal handling check. Try to calm it down. Jeez, oh, he's making it sound like it's impossible. That's never the case. Little baby boy. Hey, thirteen plus eight, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Damn. With a twenty-one, we're not being aggressive. With a twenty-one. The bone club kind of boomerangs back to this little cue bone. That's really cool. And it just holds it in his little hands, and it just just looks at you, and isn't doing anything else. But since it's just you and Chud is there, is Chud f- even facing the right way right now? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> that's not. That's like. Well, no, I put him down, so I probably he's he might have moved. Right. <laughs> but that seems potentially more out of character. True. No. He, uh, he just he so he's is where you facing put him. the right way. So the Cubone's just looking, and it just sees you not doing anything aggressive and holding your now uh, bleeding head, and Chud just Chud. contemplating the mysteries of the you know universe, yeah, obviously impermanence. Um, but the Cubone does not throw the Bone Club again. It's looking at you like Cubone, and I kidnap it. No, uh, Cubone. Can I look? At, how does this thing look? Does it look like it's what I, Andrew is imagining, which is like a stray dog that's probably been out in the woods too long? Oh, defo. Oh, yeah. He mm. needs help. I'm about to rehabilitate this Q-bone, whether it wants me or not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I'm just like, hey, a little bu- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out a ration. Mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it down. Th- I'm taking my notes from Jayquees. Huevos Rancheros. <laughs> Some huevos rancheros. <laughs> I'm just going to... Put it in its little tunnel and be like, "Hey, buddy!" And I think Chud probably starts moving to eat the. Oh, oh I, most assuredly. So I probably have to pick up Chud. And I'm like, it's, "He's with me. He's my. Fr- Do you want to be my friend like he is?" Chud, once you pick Chud up, Chud's doing the turtle thing. Yes, he is. He's doing the corgi walk <laughs> in air. <laughs> just, just like uh, slowly trying to walking get to, the food. to nowhere, <laughs> trying to get to the food, <laughs> paddling, paddling. Ugh. I think food makes him very active. That's and by very active, I mean. 
not, active. Not comatose. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not stock still. Not surviving on a different plane of existence that is glorious. Yeah. You set the food down. You set out the little huevos rancheros, your little uh, breakfast leftovers. Is that another animal handling check? Uh, you... we'll, we'll stick with the 21. Okay, We'll cool. stick with the 21. I just didn't know. You set it down. And the Cubone very timidly steps out of the shadows as it walks forward. Go ahead and just give me give me a quick perception check. 18. 18. With an 18, as it steps a little bit out of the shadows toward uh, this sweet little snackum, you do see that it is like a very dusty and dirty Pokemon. And under its little skull helmet, you actually see like what at first look looks like it might have been like mud or it's something. Crying, I know. Uh, <laughs> A little oh. bit like that, but also um, a it's little bit bleeding. of uh, maybe. Oh. Or maybe not that it was bleeding, but maybe that this is. Uh, oh, oh, I said leaking. <laughs> oh, no. So I thought no. you said bleeding. He's been through some stuff. It's like like a, there might have been some blood on this skull. It's actually a ditto. Before it put it on. Oh. oh. Yeah, we all know canonically what that means. Oh, oh little buddy. Oh, little buddy. Does he eat the food? Is he still being... Very, very timidly, like, goes and starts, like, it's kicking okay. at it, but it's just okay. still keeping an eye on you it's as okay. it's just... You know? Yeah, no, it's okay, buddy. And that's that's its turn. Okay. Can I... Do, uh, this, uh, are you really enjoying... Oh, I, I mean, like, you're more than welcome, Jake Weiss, to come over at any point you'd like. I was going to say, uncharacteristically, Jake Weiss is not blundering into a situation. He is just going left and right watching. <laughs> <laughs> he's still going left and right. <laughs> oh, obviously. But he's just watching for far. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, uh... One, bon- eye, one eye here, one eye in the butt. Bonus action. <laughs> Pokedex? You know that this is, in fact, a Q-bone. Yeah, it is. So you are able to put that together. I, I think that it's a little bit easier for you to put two and two together because uh, you all found the item that you did earlier from the Mandibuzz. Mm-hmm. Um, but you were able to put together that this is a little Q-bone, and it looks like it is lonely and uh, been having a hard time. Yeah, it does. I'm going to make Chud insight the Q-bone. <laughs> <laughs> what is Chud trying to find out? <laughs> Just, just oh. the general, just the general the vibe of this little guy. So maybe, maybe, vibe check. Yeah, just a vibe check. Okay, uh, give me a Chud vibe check. Okay. Roll of check vibe. He gets to add my intelligence <laughs> to what he would normally add. Dang to this. So he his whiz, his whiz, which is only a plus one. So okay. I probably for should've now. Just, for I should have probably just rolled with advantage. But okay. <laughs> well, but but he's got his proficiency, right? He is proficient. Yes. So he's got plus four. So plus four. So he's plus nine. Okay. That's a 20. 20? Yeah. What's it want to know? Like, what's Chud? I mean, Chud's just vibe check. (laughs) You tell me. (laughs) You tell me. I didn't really have a game plan when I went into this. I'm just burning time while this thing eats. Gotcha. Uh, Vibe's good. I mean, as far as you're concerned, in the fact that the vibe is not uh, violent anymore. Okay. It's not like, you know, stray dog lashing out at you just because it's like, whoa, you're in my spot, right? Yeah, for uh, sure. No, yeah. The Cubone is now uh, starting to seem a little bit more at ease, okay. uh, snacking on the leftover breakfast. Okay, well then I'll let it take its turn to, to snack some more, I guess. You yeah, tell me. the Cubone eats. Okay, Still cool. looking at you. And then back to me. I'm gonna try and just like reach out and like touch it. Like, like what would be a pet I don't know that you pet Cubones because they're kind of, I don't know what their skin deal is. Right. Like, we imagine in anime and it's like, oh, but I don't know, I actually know what that would be. Like, is that scales? I don't know. Like an iguana, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Like, I don't know. I mean, like, there's the theory that it's a Kangas Khan Uh-oh. that's mom's dead. Like, it's the little, little Joey. The Gungus. Yeah. The, the, the so that's that's gungus. one of the theories on what a, a Cubone is. But then there's a bunch of different theories that it's like, oh, it could be any Pokemon. Am I just walking back and forth on like a bunch of parched, bleached bones? <laughs> There's some bones here. Hmm. There's some bones around. Yeah. Old ones and new ones. Yeah. I'm about to catch something that your Pokemon or my Pokemon murdered its family. <laughs> I have been thinking about this nonstop. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Me too. I'm just going to reach out and try and pet it or Great. put an arm on it. I think it's more like... um. With it being a, a sort of ground type desert like, like Pokemon, hug. I think it's more like a Rocky. like a rhino hippo kind of mm. kind of flesh. I love it. Yeah, I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah, I just want to give it basically a, a hand hug because I don't think I can fit my whole body in there, and I don't really want to scare it by trying. Totally. Go ahead and give me another animal handling check. This time at advantage. Yes. Uh, uh, Fourteen plus eight, which is a twenty-two. It lets you pet it. 
How's it going over there? I think, I think, I, I think good. I'm just trying to calm this little guy down. He looks like he's gone through like, he looks kind of like you after the big cats. Oh, battle scarred. B scared. T t it's like you and me had a baby after the cats. Interesting phrasing. What does he look like? Can I come over? You Sure. I just peek my head over. Yeah, you peek your head over. You see that Virgil is uh, gently petting this cue bone. Uh, has a little bit of a little egg left over around his little face. Hey, wait a second. Muzzle. That bone looks like this bone. And I hold up the thick club. Hey, spoon. Vibe check continues. Vibe is like, it's a good bone. <laughs> oh, okay. I think he likes that bone. This bone? Yeah, I think he likes that bone. Or or they like that bone. I don't know its gender yet. Oh, I've been carrying around this grim remembrance of mortality. <laughs> if you want it for this little guy, feel free. <laughs> okay, are you it, sure? Yeah, if it, they, them likes this bone, hell yeah. Okay. What am I going to do with it other than contemplate impermanence? I, ta I take the bone and, and I, I, I put it near the whatever little leftover huevos ranchero. I assume it probably ate all of it. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because it may have been days. But, like, I put the bone down next to it and just, like, I'm going to hippogriff in this thing. You just, put... I, I, I want to honor its existence. I'm a hippogriff in this thing. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah! I'm a hippogriff in this thing! <laughs> As you set down the thick club as an offering before this cue bone, uh, the cue bone looks at its little, you know, almost like toothpick little bone that it has and thinks about it for a second, looks at the other bone, and then looks at the two of you. Great vibe check. Natural 20 vibe check. The cue bone, like, tosses its little toothpick bone, picks up that thick club, and just looks at the both of you like, okay. Hell yeah, little dude. All right, I'm going to go okay. check it out. Let me know when you're done. I think we're maybe about to be done. I'll give you guys some alone time. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and, and I'm just gonna look at him and be like, "Hey, hey, little buddy, you look really tired." Kibong. Do you want to take a nap? It just nods. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think Chud is gonna yawn. Chud uses yawn, and a second goes by, and the Cubone falls asleep. A peaceful look on its face, as much as you can tell underneath the bloody skull. Aww. And I. <laughs> Like, like, for my own Andrew's personal thing. Yeah. Do I feel like I like like it? It liked us enough that I'm not kidnapping it. Yes. Okay. Cool. That's yeah. all I really needed to know. Yeah. Between between the vibe checks and the animal handling. Oh yeah. Okay. Most deaf. Then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take out my my last nut, and I'm gonna put it to it. With your previous animal handling checks, uh, both of which were enough to uh, surpass the catch DC, you place the Pokeball against the Cubone, and it gets sucked up in it, and it just shakes a couple times in your hand, and it clicks. You've caught a sleepy little Cubone. Yes. Now the question is, do I let it stay with me, or do I send Nidoran back? That is the question, is it not, adventurer? It sucks. I send the Nidoran back. You've got the Cubone in your party. I fall down the rocky escarpment onto the Metagross. Oh. <laughs> Pandora's like, hey, you guys done? <laughs> yep. So with that, now that you have caught this Cubone, this sweet little friend, uh, yeah, <laughs> you jumped over and I just tumbled down land on Hephaestus. <laughs> no, I do it normally. You could, you could jump down and land on Hephaestus. I zen float. I put Chud in his Pokeball and I walk down safely. Nice. And I think I put... Juniper back to being my main. I think I'm gonna walk and with Arnie. Chud back in my backpack when I get to the bottom, though. Nice, love that, love that. He's probably butt up though. <laughs> <laughs> it, probably, it probably takes a few times of like in nut, out get of in nut, in nut, out of nut, in nut. Okay, he's, he's <laughs> now right. he's in there. Got it. <laughs> so as you all go back down to the Iron Chariot, Pandora says, "Well, did you uh, did you find anything? Any luck? I I caught a little a little Cubone, a little Cubone guy. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I think it was pretty well cleared out." By the big bad bugs. Ah, okay. Yeah. I think there was some um, feasting going on. Ooh. Yeah, so just found a nut, and now I guess we head on towards the desert. All right, that towards, works for me. Towards the butte. The butte. All right, yep, yeah, wherever you guys want to go. Uh, we'll we'll go toward, uh, and she just looked over the horizon, so just over there? Yeah. All the right. Yep. And much like the cinematics from Pokemon Coliseum with the protagonist in his, like, hover bike thing, you all speed across the desert in the Iron Chariot with Pandora. 
are you all looking for Pokemon in the desert on the way there, or I will always look, but it's just to like you tell me something so I can put it in a Pokedex. Yeah, yeah. You know, if fine. there's like an interesting feature, yeah. It's mostly uh, until you get all the way out to the Butte, uh, you are just kind of crossing the desert, and so you know there are the various cacti and things and some other rock formations and stuff. And each of you can roll another D twenty to see if you're able to find any other uh, Pokemans. It's just a straight roll. 14. Yeah. Also a 14. Also a 14. Uh, you do not see any Pokemon in this barren desert. You all move right along. And nothing to draw. Nothing to draw. I mean, you, you probably draw Cubone. Yes, I draw Cubone. <laughs> uh, but I leave him in the nut. I think, I think I'm going to let him rest. Yeah, that's fair. I'm really hanging with Arnie because I know he had a hard fight. And is probably like trying to get like a little bit more limber as, as the poison leaves his system. Yeah, he did have a tough night last night, so he's definitely trying to recover right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for him, sure. You know, stretch his got the full Rogar experience. Tail. Yeah, right. yeah. But so with that, you a joke all make just your way. For us. But with that, you all make your way uh, out to the Butte. It takes uh, a little while to get out there. Yeah, it's um, a Butte. It's a Butte. Can but, you imagine crossing this on foot without this sort of carriage? It'd be a lot. It'd be bad. It'd be, I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't have enough water. We might see more Pokemon. We'd have to drink Chud juice. I mean, there's worse things. There's way worse things. I feel like the water Chud produces is really clean. I mean, it would probably be like a sort of calming effect, I, I have to imagine. Does Arn, can Arn do, do, get wa- produce water or is it bubbles? Is he real? Uh, yeah, he's got water gun too. To see, we're, we're set. You and I. Until our Pokemon run dry. <laughs> we take a short, a, a long rest. Then we get into game mechanics and we die. <laughs> so you all approach the Butte. And hey, we're uh, here. <laughs> uh, as, you, as you make your way there, you get closer and you see that there is uh, a road like to the Butte that seems to be coming from the uh, south. Not from Amanita Town, but oh. rather uh, from the direction of, you would assume, Chaga Town. Oh, yes. Uh, as you do see a little sign out front, uh, very dilapidated, and um, I don't know, there's a, there's a weird kind of dark splat on it. I wonder what that's about. Can uh, I make a nature check? Sure. But the sign does say oh, Chaga Town Mining Company. I have Company. Juniper, so it's an advantage. All right. You look at this weird dark splat on this dusty Chaga Town Mining Company sign. That's an 18. Looks like it was blood. Dang, dude. Yeah, this is for sure blood. That's blood? Yeah. Wow. I'm a survival in. I'm looking for any sort of tracks or what. You know, the Drapion obviously would leave tracks. The Gliscor would not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, Do we want to Do we want to be quiet? Do we? I don't know. I think anything that could see us would see us. I know Gliscors and stuff oh, no, are no, nocturnal. No, I mean, like, we're at a mine, right? Yeah, so like oh, it's at a the, mine. So yeah. at the entrance, like at the base of this butte, you oh. see it is this large uh, plateau at the top. Uh, you cannot see what is on the top currently, but uh, in front of you, with the sign next to the sign, there is yeah. uh, carved in the stone of the butte uh, a entrance. So, I think we can probably assume that the big bug and awful bat came from the dark inner womb of this awful butte. Yeah. W- would you agree with that? No, absolutely. Can I ask a question, God? Sure. A- out of curiosity, you know how in Fury Road, yeah, the like the buttes had like forestation on top of them. Mm, yeah. Uh huh. Is there like an ecosystem that we can see coming in? Like, are there trees and stuff on top of it, or is it just like barren? Not that you can tell from the angle that you've got right now, just looking from below. Okay. Cool. If you could, if you could get a better vantage point to look up there, I think that at the points where you were able to maybe kind of see the top a little better, I think that it was probably just hard to tell because you were so far away. Yeah, such distance. Yeah, yeah such that's, distance. That's totally, you're good. I was just uh, that was my curiosity. Hard to tell. If you could get up there, well, then I'm maybe you could what's tell. On top, but also I feel like I feel like the mine itself is probably right where y- they. Came you know from. what I mean? You know what I mean? I just what's on top of it? Yeah. You know, uh, maybe we can learn some sort of move that would allow us to fly up there or possibly climb. But as it is, my current oh, no, physical form for sure. definitely can't climb that right now. Can Lango look? Oh, good idea. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to. I'll see if he can fly that high. Okay. Yeah, Elaine can go and look, yeah. It's just that you can't, like, go up there with him, but you can, you know, send him up there and ask him whatever questions, and he can yeah, provide uh, a, a you simple can talk, yes or no. You can talk to Pokemon. Yeah. Which is still insane. Oh, no, you just talked to Pokemon I saw. It's yeah. really not that crazy. Okay. 
<laughs> I, I, I establish the psychic spiritual mind link that is really not that crazy with my bird. Okay, so like, are you replacing the one that you have with Chev now? Does it replace? Uh, yeah, I think so. If, if you're using the same feature that you used with Chev, if you want to use the other feature, since you have multiple speak with Pokemon telepathically features. They give um, you a number of cha. Yeah, I'm going to use the one, uh, the psychic specialization. Cool, so that will replace your one that you have with Chev right now. Telepathy spell. Bell. Yes, it will. Yeah, I think I think just having one at a time since it's, you know, I like quote one per day yeah, kind of thing. In, into that. Wom, Elaine wom, is out wom, of the Pokeball. He says, what would you like? Hey, buddy. Uh, first of all, looking really fresh with the with the monocle. That was a good choice. Thank you. Good choice. I don't think I saw you steal it or whatever happened. I, it was a gift. It was a gift. Oh, that makes me feel a lot better. Oui. Uh, can you take a look up there? Can you can you fly that high? Most assuredly. All right. Be safe, buddy. <laughs> and uh, just keep keep an eye out, see if you see anybody, people, what the terrain is, and let me know. We oui. And he just twirls his little feather goatee, and he <laughs> flies up top. And he flies around up there for a little bit, and then after a little bit, <laughs> comes back down. Go ahead and make a perception check for Alain. For Alain? Nothing. <laughs> there was absolutely nothing up there of interest. Not a day. Andrew focused on the wrong thing. <laughs> that is a uh uh uh. uh. So it's does he get a thing with the mo- what does the monocle? Say? Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, expertise, but I'm not going to use it yet. Oh, okay. With a sixteen, Elaine flits back down and lands on your forearm. He says, "Well, my friend, there is some trees up there. They have more of those things." And he, with one of his little wings, gestures to the the pokey nuts. Ah, there's, he says there's a bunch of nuts up there. There are some oh. of those. Yeah. Okay. Also. Oh, he's instantaneously sharing words, images, sounds, and other sensory messages with me. You see the trees. The trees see you. <laughs> uh, so, wait, is yeah. that what it says? That you, you, like, see what he saw? Yep. Oh, dope. So then, uh, yeah. you, as he describes it... <laughs> <laughs> the tentacles. No, I reject this. <laughs> it's not there. It's not there. I reject this gift. <laughs> I was just Andrew joking. <laughs> um, you also note that in addition to a couple of like apricorn trees that are up there, uh, much like in sort of hidden areas in Pokemon Gold and Silver where it's, oh, it's hard to get into this little spot, but there's a few trees instead of just one. Mm. There's also, uh, you could tell, uh, some more just small rock formations. It's mostly flat up there, yeah. but there is a little bit of quote unquote tall grass you see specifically in one spot in some of the rocks, it seems as though a hole coming up from inside the butt. A hole coming up from inside the butt. I relay this to oh. Virgil. If we go so into the butt, be, we can go out the hole at the top. There might be a secret path up. From within the butt. To it, yeah. I'm in. The butte. Thanks, Elaine. You are very welcome. Uh, it was my pleasure. I Talking think, to Elaine. What? Talking to Elaine? <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. He's like a cool really guy. Cool. Do you have anything you want me to tell him? Just, just thanks. And the monocle looks great. And monocle goatee looks great. Always thanks. Looks great. Goatee looks fresh. Thank you. Thank you. I look fresh to death. Yeah. Take a little rest, buddy. We and I do. pull out Arnie. Uh, and are you ready? We all ready to head in? Is it this awful cave? Yeah. Yeah. I. Th- I mean, yeah. I-, I think. Let's do it. Light. How? Um. Maybe there's torches. Maybe we can find a torch and I can have Ellie help with. Maybe I have an adventurer's pack. Do you have, do you have torches? I still haven't figured out what background I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I really didn't get any inventory as my character. Pandora says, you guys, you guys have torches, right? In your, in your standard issue keeper adventurer packs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I also have 50 feet of hemp and rope. Oh, nice. All adventurers do. 50 feet? It's a lot of hemp and rope. Decidedly not when descending into a labyrinth matrix. Ah, you got a Bulbasaur. But you also have 50 feet, so we technically have about 98 feet. Right. Because the knot is going to take up You do have to, yeah, got to tie that knot. Shall I poke on through? Yeah, do, uh, do you have a torch? I do. Okay. But follow me here for a second. Let's descend into the dark. Then we can light a torch. Trust me. Just for aesthetic? Just for, no, just I want to try something. Okay. Are do you want to are we moving quiet or are we do, what do you think? You think we just go in? I fear not death and I walk in. <laughs> okay. Are you sneaking or just clomping? 
Uh, he's clomping, but he is specifically doing the nature thing. Cool. cool, the, cool, cool. Uh, the thing that Andrew was talking about with uh, uh, survival. Survi- that was it. Survival. Trying to discern what yeah, types. If it was nature, I would be really good at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any pokies that are proficient in survival. Mm-hmm. No, so I, th- either. I think it's just going to be him with Arnie doing his thing. He's got oh, expertise. Joe, cool. you want to help Joe, me? If you... I, yeah, can I? If you're proficient in survival, you can. Help I'm him. not. I yeah. can't help you. Yeah. Sorry. Cool. If you break DC 25. Yeah. If you break 25, we run into Mewtwo or whatever. The top things on the list go to 1 through 25. Yeah. <laughs> Which, when I saw this rule, my brain exploded. <laughs> Shall we? Go for it. What's the odds? What's the odds that we break the game with this Yip stupid out. rule? Nine plus. I thought it was nature. It wasn't survival? No, it's survival. Oh, well. Oh, plus nine. I think you have expertise in survival, I too. do. 18. <laughs> <laughs> 18. <laughs> we get to know three types of Pokemon in the area. Three types of Pokemon in the area. This is something we maybe could have done when we were discovering about <laughs> trying to figure out That's what, true. what the hell those things were. As you are looking around and trying to get a, uh, a vibe check mm-hmm. on the area, you're looking around and there are, in fact, rock and ground. You know, uh, mm. makes sense with yeah. this being a mine. But you also feel... A dark presence. A dark presence in the mine. Do you feel it? No. That presence. We're not alone. I'm not feeling it, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> uh, and when it gets... Oh, it's dark type. Yes. I think Got that's... it. I put it together. I put it together. It was. I was still waiting for the type. <laughs> I was like... I, I think that's why he needed to not light the torch at first. Yeah. Like, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. Torch time, please. I'm scared. <laughs> For a moment, as you're looking around in the dark, uh, just the bit of light that's coming in through this front uh, door, this front entrance into the mine, uh, the shadows, you know, uh, come off of you and in front of you as you gaze ahead. And there is just a moment where the shadows seem to move of their own volition. And at that point, that is when uh, yep. you do feel it, Mr. Krabs. I do feel it, in fact, Mr. Krabs. Arnie is in his element. He feels powerful. <laughs> Does Ellie need to burn an ember in order to light the torch, or does she have enough firepower to just light the torch? She could just light a torch. (laughs) You have lit torches as the three of you (laughs) descend into the dark. We were ready for villagers, weren't we? (laughs) I'm I'm ready for this. Sounds okay. No, I am too. friends jonah here to say thank you for listening to this episode of kenoko origins i want to start off with a monster fight update we have now released the updated beta version of monster fight for playtesting for anyone who's interested in giving it a try it's still only available in our discord at the moment once we release the official version 1.0 it'll be more widely available but if you want to check the game out and chat about it with other people who are playing it and even try it out for yourself hop on over to the quest code discord i'd like to take a moment to tell you about our wonderful partner dice envy this week check out one of their amazing sets of stone dice or one of the resin sets that look like stone like the blecky stone or tombstone sets we're going into a mine stones feel thematically relevant and if you're looking to add to your dice hoard you can get 10 percent off of your purchase at dice envy by going to diceenvy.com slash quest co or by using the promo code quest co at checkout That's Q-U-E-S-T-C-O for 10% off of your entire order. If you're a fan of the Quest Company, please go to our page on the Apple Podcasts app or wherever you listen to your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. 
We really want to continue boosting the visibility of the podcast and leaving a review and rating is a really easy and really huge way that you can help us do just that. And if you love what we do here at the Quest Company and you want to take that next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show and get access to exclusive content and patron rewards. Huge shout out and thank you to our newest patron and Josh, thank you so much for supporting the show and contributing directly to everything that we are doing on and off mic. If you all would like to give us that support, you could do so at patreon.com slash quest company podcast. You can find the link to the Patreon over on our website, questcompanypodcast.com. If you'd like to contact us, you could do so directly through our website or by finding us on Instagram and Twitter at the quest company. You can also come hang out with us in our discord. Like I mentioned, if you need links to any of those things, go Go check out our website. It's all there. We know that word of mouth is the best way to get people listening to a new podcast, and that is especially true for independent shows like ours. So we would love to see you posting about the podcast, telling your friends about us using the hashtag The Quest Company or hashtag Kanoko Origins. And if you have fan art of the podcast that you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. Tagging us is the best way to make sure we see the stuff you're posting and the best way to guide folks directly to us. Speaking of fan art, we've gotten some more awesome art since our last episode. Thank you to MB at M Burgundy on Instagram for sending us a bunch of great sketches of Team Catapult with her OC Christine. And thank you to Kate at Crandon Creation over on Twitter for some amazing commissions that I got forever ago. I've been keeping a secret, but I finally got to share them because it's Chev, Ellie, and Shud with all of their items from Artisan's Alley. She also sent us a great new picture of Prince Chud trying to eat those grapes. If you haven't seen those pictures, go check out our Instagram and Twitter where we'll be posting them or take a look at the fan art gallery on the website. I'd like to thank Joe Lightus for editing this episode along with the amazing artist whose music is featured in it. Thank you to Braxton Burks and Materia Collective for the songs The Adventure Begins, Desert Sandstorm, Battle Wild Pokemon Kanto and Johto versions, Mount Moon and the Ghost of Pokemon Tower. Thank you to Daniel Rand for the songs A Wet Grave and Dignity. And thank you to Dark Fantasy Studio for the song Distant Fear. And thank you to Tabletop Audio and Solar Flare for providing the ambient sounds. Additional sound design by Horseyfoot. That's all for me, so let's get back to this investigation. Thank you for joining us here at the Quest Company. As you all go into the entrance of this mine, there's just the little bit of a hallway tunnel thing that then opens up into uh, the sort of main area. You see that there is some uh, what looks to be abandoned equipment here. Basic, uh, I mean, not like lockers, but a similar sort of like personal storage uh, setup. Uh, you see that people have their equipment and things, and then uh, one sort of area with a desk that looks like it might be some sort of makeshift office uh, for this mine. Mm. Uh, the hallway goes further. I am going to look around for any signs of the people that we came here to find within this larger area, especially if it seems like there's signs of habitation. Like, mm -hmm. like clothes or whatever, what have you. Mm -hmm. tools. Nice. Go ahead and give me that survival. Eh, that is a 13. A 13? Between that and your survival from earlier, you gather that it seems like it has been a while um, since there has been any uh, sort of work happening here in regard to mining business. Mm. But as you're looking around, as you were mentioning tracks and things mm. earlier, uh, the sands outside seem to have wiped away any evidence of, you know, creepy crawlies coming in and mm. out uh, as the winds blow across the desert. But as you enter here along the ground, you do see uh, the track marks of very familiar the Drapion. It's with you. 
Yeah, it, it's like the one ring. It's in my pocket, just radiating <laughs> evil. Uh, I am not hiding. Uh, if there are Pokemon that want to step to us, that is very well. Jaquees is in it. Okay. I think I'm letting Jaquees take point. Uh huh. If he's looking for like tracks and stuff uh-huh. along the way and kind of doing the the ranger role, mm-hmm. based on what we've heard about this mine, right? Because we did have some information about what this mine was. The right? crystals, among yeah. other things. Yeah. Uh, crystals and stones and things. Can I make an investigation for check boys. just for like anything? Yeah. Like, uh, like anything that's out of the ordinary, anything that sticks out, right? Like if there's a penny on the hey, floor. Ellie. Hey, Ellie, it's okay. Uh, I know it's dark. I know it's If there's dark. a rock that looks like a crown? If there's a rock that looks like a crown. <laughs> I don't care for it. I'll, I'll probably throw it away or, or sell it, right? I, or give it to you. I don't want it. I certainly don't want a, a rock that looks like a crown. <laughs> Get that trash out of my house. Uh, yeah, I just want to make This it rock ain't fit for this thick king. Correct. All, yeah, give me that investigation. All, all, you, all you slow king shippers, I'm letting you down right now. It ain't happening. I'm imagining if you give him the non-evolved thing, he just gets bigger. <laughs> he gets the slow king size, but not <laughs> anything else. It's huge. 18 plus 8. 18 Ooh. plus 8. 26. 26. 26. Uh, I think that you were drawn to the equipment and the desk, specifically. Oh, oh yeah, because it's, it's the like the room. It's like yeah. the headquarters. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sort of main entrance here with uh, office, desk situation, whoever was the uh, the foreman, the manager, the overseer, whatever it may be. But as you go around and you look at this desk, uh, you just see some, some ripped and scattered papers around the place. Um, more of that lovely uh, red, red splotches and such just kind of around. Um, yeah. On papers and things, probably, probably brown. Yeah, brown at this point. For yes, sure. yeah. yeah, brown and dusty, dusted over, uh, as it seems like it's been sitting this way for a while. Um, but as you look around on those, you just see glimpses of, um, you know, the notes and things that you can make out, and you see uh, what seem to be um, sort of daily, you know, entries as far as, you know, went down this tunnel, found this, and, you know, this tunnel, this. Uh, And one of the last entries that you find, you see a note about how they had, uh, that they had broken through the vein that they were going down. They busted through a bit of wall and uncovered uh, some large cavern with some sort of mysterious crystal that they were going to try to start mining more of. But that was one of the last entries that you found. Additionally, under the desk, you do find a safe. It is currently locked. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. 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 Okay. Does it, ha- does it have like a slot for a key? Yes. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, I'm 12, and the mechanics of a uh, lock picking seem very out of my world of knowledge. Plus, I don't have one, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna log that mentally, mm-hmm. and uh, be on the lookout for I think uh, keys. Cool. Which might include bodies. Hava, Ira, Michaela, Solomon. Your voice echoes through the caverns of the tunnels. You hear a slight echoing down the halls. You're not even sure which direction it's coming from. Bugs whose butts I must kick? It is quiet once more in the tunnels. Hmm. What would you like to do, adventurers? Find anything? I I found these reports, and I found this safe. I can read them. Okay, do you want to read them? Uh, yes. I, I mean, I'll, t- I'll just tell you. The okay, that sounds good. Too. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just tell him the information <laughs> on it about the the crystal and whatnot, and and also if you see any, um, this might be grim, mm-hmm. but like bodies, ah, or if you find like keys, yes, or maybe maybe poop. Oh, might be, it might be in poop. I'm following you. Yeah, yeah. But there's this safe. Do Pokemon poop? I've never seen them do it. I don't know. I've never once seen a Pokemon. Ellie poops, right? Yeah. It's okay. Ellie poops. Never mind. I have had probably at one point seen a Pokemon poop. <laughs> I think that in your ventures she in the forest, really you've, you've stepped in poops. many, uh, <laughs> many uh, uh, a poop. You know what? You know what? Pokemon looks at you while they're pooping. It means they trust you, right? Really? Uh huh. Did you know that milk tanks produce a gas that can like light entire fields on fire? Yeah. I keep going. Also delicious milk. <laughs> That's true. I would love to catch a mill tank. Everybody hates on mill tanks, but I no, want one. Great. It's just because of Whitney. It's not because it's of Whitney. Whitney's it's because everyone's like, oh, look at their udders. And I'm like, that's awesome. Free the udder. Thank you. 
So, as you all continue down the tunnel, I assume, uh, Pandora is there alongside you, but once again, uh, since this is technically y'all's mission, she's letting y'all kind of go ahead and scope things out, and she's just here if you need her. Question, does she seem phased by the blood everywhere? She just seems aware of it. You can oh, make an okay, insight cool. check if, like, you want to try to discern any further. <laughs> just wanted to know if she was like, oh, these boys might be getting in over their head. I think we were, and then we drank the water, and now we are no longer in over our head. Hi, Ellie. We were drowning in the deep end. That's true. And our response was to... <gasps> just, just drink the water. Yeah. To drink the water until it was gone. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that works. As you all go down the tunnels, uh, you do see against the um, the glint of your torchlight just the remains of some of these ore veins and things mm-hmm. as you walk through. Mostly picked through. It's just like the, the tiny glints of what's been left over. Mm-hmm. Uh, things that, you know, maybe were a little stubborn and didn't quite make it out of the wall or, you know, what have you. But as you continue along, the tunnels do split off in front of you. There is mm-hmm. one to the left and one to the right. I'm going to, again, survival, looking for, if not tracks at this point, maybe maybe there will be less uh, uh, interference from the outside winds or anything this far in. Mm. Uh, if if not for a big flashing yellow like sign pointing in one direction, I'm right. just going to look for the most traveled or the most recently traveled. Mm, gotcha. Go ahead and give me that survival. Um, 19 plus 9. Ooh, nice. 28. Nice, nice, nice. Can I add to this? It, anything, any knowledge that I have from reading those papers. Like if I saw any mining plans or like the, the layout of the mine. I know that you didn't say a map, but like if there was like clues as to like, we went down the right, you know what I mean? Right. Like the, like uh, any knowledge that I would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think you can to contribute to this with that. And uh, judging from... Joe also killed it with the roll. So also he's killed it. Also kill that one. Oh, he, doesn't have, he doesn't have survival. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't do that. Uh, but I, I think that it makes sense that uh, from the little bit, I think that it makes sense that from the bit that you were able to gather from your investigating the papers and everything, and then with your very high survival, it does seem as though the right one is definitely the more traveled. You can mm. see more of the, the Drapion uh, tracks Interesting. going back and forth from this way. You also, with your, what was that, 28 total? 28. You do see some more human looking footprints shoes that don't seem to be like work boots and it seems as though that they're kind of just like maybe drug along the way for a little bit and then like picked back up or something or other they're they're just kind of scattered and not really in certain spots at one point i'm uh, sorry if the bad guy here is mr mime i'm actually gonna be afraid (laughs) (laughs) but it seems as though like the the humanoid footprints like um they they kind of get dragged along in one way and then you actually at one point a little further down this tunnel you see where it looks as though maybe it like tried to run away before there was a bit of a scuffle and like they're then Bodily. not the footprints anymore as the Drapion tracks continue down the hallway. So it is the Drapion tracks that we're looking at in between these sort of staccato bursts of human? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And it is going towards one specific tunnel. Th- those are heading toward the right tunnel, uh, which lines up with what you were reading in the papers as like somewhere down that way the zone was wherever this strange cavern was. Yeah. Keep moving down that direction, not hiding but not speaking to uh what's the word uh call out mm, gotcha so you just follow along with jayquees there virgil I, yes i'm silently and, pointing out um, the tracks i think he's investigating like yeah. anything of like i'm i'm the roomba that's going behind jayquees right you know what i mean oh I just yeah wanna, like if there's crystals if there's if there's you, you, like you know what i mean anything that is out of place th- i think this is probably how this tag team yeah. Works. Oh yeah, that you're you're following behind and, and looking. I'm for trusting any, him any extras to see the thing first. Yeah. Whilst I while I just try and take care of it. Yeah. So go ahead and give me investigation as you continue Kia. down. A twelve plus eight twenty. Twenty. You note that down the hallway to the left, uh, it seems as though as you sort of move your torch over that way and look down that hallway a little bit before continuing after Jaquees. It seems as though to the left you see more of these. Uh, just little bits of whatever's left over in these veins along the hallway. Uh, and you do see some flashes of kind of like primary colors glinting off of your torchlight. Uh, again, very faint because this is a very well-traveled, very mm. well-picked-through part of the mine, but it seems as though um, that might have been uh, 
stones or whatever it may be of that variety uh, would be what was in this uh, zone mm. as you're going toward the left. And then as you follow down the right, it doesn't seem like there's anything that he has not picked up on yet. So you continue going down yeah. the right tunnel, following these drapion tracks. As you go along, the tunnels sort of continue, and there's another point where uh, you reach a little bit of a cavern once more. Again, just seems like another room that's picked over. There's a little bit of equipment left in here, but not much, and uh, there's actually two tunnels, but if you take a second just to look, you see that they just kind of connect once more, as it just seems like maybe there were just two veins that they ended up just popping right back together and continuing right. down Continuous. on their way. The tunnels sort of loop around a ways and you feel like you are uh, perhaps going a bit lower into the ground uh, at a more rapid pace, a bit steeper of a grade than you were before. And as you are making your way down and around, you actually find uh, another fork uh, where uh, if you go straight ahead, it continues to go down and then the uh, fork off seems like it gets back to like more fork of a regular off. going up. Or yeah. going regular. Yeah, going going like regular, and maybe it will go up. Interesting. Uh, as you go a little further. And the more travel. So we've descended to this. Yes, you have descended to this. Okay. And if you continue one descending. one potentially ascends, and one continues to descend. Correct. Okay. The one that seems to be descending is the one that, as you look, you see the more tracks. of these tracks that you have been following. I'm Sometimes sorry. I feel like I have a cave inside of me, like in my mind. What are your passive perceptions again? Thirteen. 12. 12 and 13. As you all are continuing down, 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 you find yourselves in more of a cavern that uh, has stalagmites and stalactites. Uh, and as you pass your torches through, the shadows bounce off of the walls and partially obscuring even when you're trying to shed light in an area. It is not until you are right under them that you just see a lot of, a lot of Gligar hanging there. Like... More than two. Like more than two. Like a horde amount of Gligar. <sighs> Their eyes open. <laughs> they all descend upon you. Roll initiative. Hell yes, dude. It's a horde fight. Fifteen plus one. Eighteen for me. With initiative rolled, the order will be Virgil, Jake Weiss, the Gligar horde, and then Pandora as she enters the room last with Cerberus. Oh, uh, yes. Pandora enters the fray. Ah! With a little bit of fire. Jake Wee's howls too. Ah! Oh, God. God, no. Okay. <laughs> the howls echo through the caverns. Yeah, that's right. They, they're they bats. We just need to be loud. <laughs> Drum on. Ah! Virgil, you're up first. What you going to do as the, as the bad bats are descending? Okay. I said Juniper was out. Yep. Launch a leech seed directly into uh, the the group. Rolled a hit. Gia. Natural 20. Ooh, Oof, wow. Too fun. bad I don't think it does much for no. a leech seed. Uh, for leech seed, I'll give you crit damage on the first. On the first? <laughs> yeah. On the first drain? Yeah, because it makes me sad to not before, like get too. something for I think that. so, too. Yeah. Uh, also, she has an item. She has, um... Yes, she has Miracle Seed. You get to add your proficiency to grass-type moves. Cool beans. To the damage. Okay. Then, uh, obviously, bonus action. Uh, tell me the rough estimate of the, <laughs> the group hit points of this horde of class. <sighs> Go ahead and just give me give me the, <laughs> the nature check. Yeah. Hey, is this made an advantage because Juniper is out? Oh, is she proficient in nature? Uh-huh. Then yes. Natural 20. Natural 20. Back to back. Ooh. It seems as though the average amount of hit points for each of the Gligar in the horde is 24. Okay, so a good amount of 24s. Good to know. But I, do I... Dude, we're about to eat these guys. Do I know how many are in the horde? There's a lot. They're all flying around real quick, and you do not have dark vision. That's You are you are completely justified in everything <laughs> you've said. Uh, about 24 per each. We're just going to have to hurt them quite I'm a bit. I'm just trying to knock every single bat unconscious. <laughs> okay. Well, that is that is my turn. That is your turn. Jake Weiss, you're up. The bats are descending. Arnie is going to fire indiscriminately into the horde above. Three fast-moving bubbles. Nice. <laughs> Shoot your magic bubble missile. This isn't at advantage. Wait, a missile? firing into like a... What's a, mi a missile? A missile? A missile. A oh, missile. You know, like a sling, like shooting a sling. It's yeah, your Would that be a, a, a no missile? One in, a missile no is one in very... canon said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no one mentioned anything more propulsive than a catapult. I just want you to know that I'm hunting, always. <laughs> 13 plus 3, so 16 to hit. Barely hits, yes. Natural 20 to hit. Definitely hits. And... Uh, seven to hit. The first two will hit. Arnie just looking up there in the crowd says, You're mine! And shoots up two of these bubbles at one of the Gligar. Stick around! Uh, four on the first one. Okay. That's doubled to eight. And two. Doubled because of... Crit. Crit. And then doubled because of, I assume, effective damage. Correct! Because it is super effective. So it was how many for that? Four double to uh, yeah, four double to eight, and then two double to four double to eight. Got it. Sixteen. Math. Four double to two double to. Blah, 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 blah. Pokemon. Boom, boom. Shoot up at one of the Gligar up in the horde. Now one of them is dripping wet and flying a little bit uh, lower than the others. It sort of loses its uh, glide for a second uh, as they all seem to be riding on whatever bit of uh, you know draft is going through these caves as they're coming down. Ooh. <laughs> Coming to get you, boys! I see you're looking to enter this mine. Many have tried. None returned. None returned. One Gligar is looking wet and unhappy. It is then the Horde's turn. Everybody make a constitution save. <gasps> what, what, wait. Yes! So wait. Uh, I'm going to use Arnie's brand new muscle tank Ooh. to get advantage on this con save. Nice. Instantly useful. You're seven plus five. Twelve will not get it, unfortunately. Just barely. And then what did you, Jayquees, get? Five. Virgil? Natural 20 for Juniper. Nice. Three in a row. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Uh, Virgil, uh, 14. 14. Okay, both of those succeed and Pandora and Cerberus are fine. Yeah, don't even make them roll. That's how cool they are. Uh, no, they did roll. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Um, they good. just both succeeded. Sure. Fine. I thought uh, they rolled. But uh, as this just bunch of Gligar descend, they whip up the sand in the uh, cavern here, mm. and <laughs> it's almost like a sandstorm in here. But with this sand attack, Arnie will now have a minus one to hit all of his attack rolls for the remainder of this combat, as do you, Jayquees, as the, uh, the sand is in your eyes. My attack rolls! Juniper, being a, a more, uh, a, you know, succulent Bulbasaur, resists. <laughs> And Virgil just closes his eyes. <laughs> Glasses. Yeah, there you go. That one does take leech seed damage. That crit leech seed. Wait, no, did I only leech seed one? You leech seeded one of them in there. Oh, I wanted to, like, leech seed the group. Okay, 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 I see how it is. No, it's fine. The seeds shoot out and net, like, wrap around one of the Gligar in the horde. Okay. Ooh, that's a four on the natural 20, so doubled to eight, and that's a two doubled to four, so that's... So that's 16 points of leech seed damage. Ooh, 16 Which means Juniper points. gets back eight that she doesn't need. She's super saying again. Nice. Are they weak to grass? They are not weak to grass. Dang it, that would have been lethal. They are not weak to grass, but still 16. Not it's not good. That Gligar is also falling to the ground a little bit before steadying itself. Then on Pandora's turn, as they uh, are still not quite descending... She's going to use Flamethrower and be like, oh, look how cool I am. I killed, like, seven. Uh, <laughs> oh, were you, about to, were you about to roll up Flamethrower, Jonah? I was not actually about oh, to roll okay, up Oh, okay, sure. No, uh -huh. no, no, no. Uh, she is, however, going to... Uh, <laughs> Gosh. I'm just messing you. Virgil's going to be like, wow, we. Uh, I'm just being a bud. Cerberus steps forward and just releases this purple cloud of smog into the mob. <laughs> that was uh, a four for the group, so uh, not not great oh, they for make them. Checks as a group, they just don't take beach seed damage as a group. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an area of effect. <laughs> kidding. Ooh. Kidding, Jonah. I'm so kidding. <laughs> there was an answer. I have no area of effect. It's Should literally we? the first thing I looked at when this started. <laughs> like a bullet deflected from his from his. <laughs> oh, I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> the hammer. I have, yeah, nothing. Absolutely zero things that are area of effect. I have water sport. Great. They all take five points of poison damage and are poisoned. <laughs> From the smile. That is Pandora's turn. <laughs> Virgil. Juniper is gonna use Vine Whip on somebody. Vine Specifically, Whip. Specifically, not the one she's leech seated. Got it. 
so you're just gonna use Vine Whip uh, indiscriminately up into the mob as they are. As long as it's not the one that's leech seated. Uh, that's that's a natural twenty. Oh my gosh! I'm not even kidding. Wow. I'm it's not great. even kidding. I mean, like oh, she's, kill, a, kill, she's kill. a well-established death machine. So yeah, but like that. That's four in a row. That's bonkers. Well, yeah. What? Use them now. I've had advantage. Yeah, I know. Great. <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, anywho, <laughs> that was the most DM thing I could imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Hurt the uh, Gligar. It's okay. It's roll the four on my D12. It is going to be twelve points of damage. 12 points of damage. With the Vine Whip. The Vine Whip. And then, bonus action, Pokedex. Ooh. You're getting a good read on these bad scorpion bats with their pincers at the end of their wings and those tails coming down ready to try to sting <laughs> as they are gliding towards you. But that is your turn then. Jake Weiss, you're up. Michael Bublé. I hate you. I hate that that made me laugh. <laughs> 13, a 15, and a 20. The 20 will hit. What? 15 didn't hit? Oh, no. Uh, okay. Which one are you trying to hit? One of the ones that's been hit already or no? I think one of the, the been hit ones. Okay. The one that you hit with the He's bubble earlier. Cute. Oh, is a cutie. Uh, one that I hit with the bubble? Yeah. Bam, bam. Three, which is double to six. Three, double to six points. That Gligar continues to be wet and unhappy. No. It is now unhappier. It is then the mob's turn. The mob descends now as they have glid down from the top of this cavern. And now you are surrounded by these purple bat-like creatures flying in and out all around you. So first of all, they all try to (laughs) quick attack your Pokemon as they're flying in and out in between you. None of them managed to hit either of your Pokemon because that was uh, an eight and a one. But then with a 19, one of them will actually manage to hit uh, Cerberus. That's uh, a bad choice. That's just you picked the <laughs> that you picked the wrong dude. That's like me walking up to the rock and punching him in the jaw and being like, "What are you gonna do about it?" Cerberus just looks as this little Gligar has like landed on one of his haunches and just That's sort of like fun. banged into it and is getting ready to try Giant. to sting him. And it's gonna have a time. All of them are also going to try to poison sting. The first poison sting does hit Juniper. With a 19. Gasp. Misses. Arnie, Arnie. Misses Arnie with a 9. Just barely hits Cerberus' AC. 17. Now we know Cerberus' AC. So that we can betray. Pet him. (laughs) Pet him real good. Six points of poison damage to Juniper. And seven points of poison damage to Cerberus. Leech Seed. Leech Seed. Nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. Uh, the one Gligar just falls to the ground, KO'd by the Leech Seed. She, it only had three hit points remaining. <laughs> so you do get two. Cool. Got, got none of those 16. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Pandora... She sees that this one Gligar has, uh, again, uh, clung on to Cerberus's haunches, and uh, Cerberus is going to go to uh, bite it. Natural 19. It flinches, but it's not going to last that it's long. It's going to flinch in the next life. It's, it's, it's sort of key is going to flinch Maybe. as it leaves its body. And that is enough to get it to 19. Okay. Which Ooh. does KO that Gligar. Ooh. Ooh. We can take her. Yep. <laughs> uh, 19 she points she of dark damage the outside. It's fine. If there's one thing that we know is that we can't be killed. Correct. <laughs> she did not leave uh, Hephaestus outside. Come and take <laughs> And she still has other Pokeballs on I'm her sure belt. Sure she does. They're empty. We know. <laughs> I don't know what kind of mood I'm in today, but I don't know either. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, I'm not, I don't think it's combative. Well, it's whatever just you like, do. It's just like looking for something. I don't know. Are we all- Whatever you do, fight the DM on everything. What is an apple cough? It is now your turn, Virgil. Juniper's going to use Vine Whip on the one that she used Vine Whip on before. Die. That's 19 to hit. 19 will hit. Okay, give me that D12. That's two plus four, so a total of six. Six? It did have five remaining, and it is KO'd. Nice. Three of the Gligar fall into the ground, <laughs> dropping like flies Thunk. as the horde thins out. Jake Weiss. Buble. Get it back. I'm burning it down. Plus three, minus one because of the tail whip or the sand blast, whatever it was. Ten attack. Natural one. Three and a ten. Holy crap. So none of those hit. 
Huh. Yeah, as the bubbles go wide, as uh, Arnie was just like, blah, <laughs> shooting into the middle of mob and just hoping it's that really something hard to hit. make bubbles when you're screaming like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he yeah. does miss. Yeah. <laughs> That's my turn. Yeah. That is your turn. The remaining Gligar will try to, uh, once again, quick attack everybody. Virgil. Do all miss, though, as I think that, like, Azrael was trying to like angle up. He like lost his balance and just like kind of fell on the ground. And so one tries to come at him and then also falls on the ground. <laughs> Skids on its face next really? to him as it also rolled a nat one. Oh, hey, nice. Look at that. <laughs> that was their quick attacks. And then then they go to run into all of you using knockoff. 19 to hit Juniper. That same Gligar like tries to get up and just like with his tail already doom, knocks it back down. <laughs> nice. Another one just sort of like tries to ram itself into Another Cerberus, uh, ready to uh, have a bad time. So Juniper and Cerberus will take dark damage. 11 points of damage. Jeebers. And the Miracle Seed is knocked out of <gasps> Juniper's hands. What? Finds, succulent. She doesn't have the Miracle Petals. Seed. It used knockoff. Oh. Eight points, half to four against Cerberus because dark type. Unbelievable. That is the Gligar's turn. Unbelievable. Pandora on her turn. Uh, once again, as another Gligar has made the mistake of step into Cerberus, Cerberus is going to use Fire Fang. Woo! 16 points of damage as that Gligar is still barely up. Cerberus just like rips it off of him and just ragdolls it and then throws it against the cavern wall. That is her turn, as there are very few Gligar still remaining, and they seem to be spooked. <gasps> Virgil. Quick, eat them. Eat their XP. Cool. They, they seem spooked? Yeah. Awesome. Juniper's going to find the healthiest looking one uh -huh. and use Leech Seed. Great. Uh, 17 plus 3 to hit. Hits. Cool. Um, and then I want to use my bonus action. Can I go run and grab the the big the 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 miracle seed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, i just don't want these bandits to fly off with yeah it. true yeah you I can, you can pick up the miracle is. seed cool yeah, yeah, yeah. you've leech seeded the most healthy looking one yep which coincidentally is the one that is on the ground next to uh, arnie right now okay wait now wait now there's not another one flying up there that looks healthy there's quote two left in the hole ah makes sense jeeps if you wanted me to add a sixth no, no, the I sixth, just, the Gligar. I just want the one that's gonna fly away in the horde, <laughs> right? I just want one of those healthy boys that are up top. I was gonna slowly drain it as it ran away. That's I don't fine. want the one that's about to get murked. Yeah, you can do that. That's can fine. Can I do that? Yeah, you sure? can tell Juniper not Listen, to go for the one that's about to get murked. I'm not trying to be combative here. <laughs> I just, by most most healthy, I meant the one that's not going to get killed by anything so that she can heal from it. No, you're fine. Okay. I, I love you, buddy. If you I, don't intend want, I feel like I'm combative and I don't right want to be combative. Jake Weez looks at the side of the cave wall, his, his gaze fixed towards it, the torch behind him putting shadows of people, shadows of ourselves, of the things that we come across in the world. And I wonder for a second if the shadows are the real world and I have imagined everything up until this point. That's why I didn't want the one on the ground near him. <laughs> this is an allegory! I call, I call out into the... <laughs> you call out, this is an allegory on your turn. What are you going to do? Oh, is it my turn now? Yeah. yeah. It's been your turn. Boom. Dang it. That's a 15 and two 13s. Oh, wait, unless it's got advantage if it's on the ground. Yeah, you got oh. advantage because it's on the ground. Uh, still absolutely... Uh, okay, so that's 17. 17 hits. Uh, thank you. 1d4, 1d4, 4, double, 8. 8 points of damage as Arnie gets up and blah, <laughs> releases the bubbles. That is the end of your turn. It is then the remaining Gligar's turns as they go to uh, try to quick attack and poison sting. Punish me for my decisions, daddy. <laughs> quick attack will hit Juniper. 16. That's a 1 on the d4, though. Yes. So 1 point of damage. Okay, we'll get that back. Yeah, it's a nine, does not hit Azuril. Nine to hit with knockoff again. They miss all of their things on their turn. Arnie has been scratched. There's less of them. Like the ones that are still up in the air circling are starting to try to make and their way towards the door. one's getting weaker with one, six plus one, seven points of damage to something up there. Seven points to one who's just kind of up there as you get, get back, back four. Four. Cerberus 
it has three hit points left. Cerberus eats the, the one that was on it. It goes over to where it, the, it flung the one and just eats it. Oh, seven. Br Press Brutal. F. Pay respects. Brutal. <laughs> Uh, he ate it. It's your turn, Virgil. There's technically one remaining in the horde as the others are flying ahead. Cool. The one that's disperse. remaining in the horde. Vine whip. Die. 10 plus 4. 14. Not this is Jacqueline. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Thank you. 20, in 17, and 17. There you go. So, All like, hit. Oh, my goodness. One of them is a crit. Here's the crit. Uh, 2 plus 4 plus 8. So it's 8. Yep. Plus 4. Yep. Plus two. Somehow, just what? How do you how do you finish off the last Gligar of the horde? Quickly, <laughs> it hits the Gligar and Jayquees runs over and stomps. <laughs> on you have defeated the horde as the remaining Gligar glide out of the tunnel away from where you. You all would are say at. they used an action to glide away. Sure. Leech seed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a four and a two again. Plus one, so that's a seven. Oh Give me back those one, two, three, four. And then they seem to be out of range for the life yeah, force sure. to make it back. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Azril. He has a fancy voice too, not just Chev. Nah, it's oh, his okay, internal yeah. monologue. Azril. It just makes me happy. Yeah. If you use telepathy on him, it's that. You are alone in the cave once more as the stalagmites and stalactites bounce shadows off of them with your torchlight. There's another tunnel further ahead. You keep I, going. I just pet Juniper, and I'm, I, I feel like she did a really good job. We need more things that do area of effect to myself. I do not hear that thought, and I continue <laughs> to bravely march forward. <laughs> Is there anything in this room? Uh, in this room, you I'm can... I'm going to slow us down at every second, Joe. If there's stuff in this it's room... It's just the story of today, I feel. <laughs> and I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's okay. If there's stuff in this room, I'll help uh, with the, the searching. Cool. Go ahead and make an investigate. investigation. Where did they all fly firstly? I do not have investigation proficiency. Did they just, like, fly up and out? Was there, like, a... They flew out the way that you guys came Okay, through. so they went back out the... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did not go deeper in. With a 28, there's a lot of guano around. Obvi. They poop. They poop. Yeah, they poop. We should search every piece of poop for a key. Maybe. <laughs> that might be what I'm doing. We'll see. Uh, it does not seem as though there is the a... man eaters, though. True. Yeah, no, it's it's just kind of small stuff. Little, uh, maybe, you know, ratata-sized uh, things. Yeah. If, if, you, if you go digging around. But as you are looking around, you do find uh, a couple of berries... One of them, like, is kind of kind of half-eaten a little bit, but it looks like it still has the amount of nutritional value. And then you also just see tattered pieces of clothing. Is it bright-colored clothing? Who, who did I say had bright-colored clothing? Hava. Yeah, it was Hava. It is not specifically bright-colored clothing. It seems to be more of maybe tattered pieces of a uh, miner's uniform. I'm going to take out Ellie. I mean, she's already out. Can I let her, like, sniff the tattered rags and see if that doesn't <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like if she starts, ooh, no, this is the perfect time. I, I, can, I make Ellie use odor sleuth. Yeah. Nice. Also, I'm not picking up that berry. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll point it out to Jayquees if he wants it, but I, I feeding poop berry to one of my Pokemon feels I'm wrong. Good. Yeah. As Ellie uses odor sleuth, uh, she goes sniffing around and she, she sniffs that piece of clothing and seems to pick up the scent. She, she scooby-doos along the cavern for a minute uh, and she does seem to kind of hop back on track of as you continue forward, once you're out of where this scuffle just happened, yeah. uh, seems to be going back down further uh, along with these drapey on tracks. Cool. Well, then I think I'll just let Ellie kind of walk maybe with Jayquees and kind of lead the way with him. Cool. But she's not my like active. Yeah, she's just think. flavor yeah, she's out. Just, she's just flavor out helping Jayquees. Not that he needs it. Both of you just make perception checks real quick. 18 plus uh, something. Roll 21 as well. 20, 19 plus 2. I'm not proficient in it. As you all start making your way toward this tunnel to go further down into the mines, uh, once again, uh, with your torch light, uh, the light bounces off of these bits of mineral and stone uh, veins that glow in the light, uh, and you see the, the shadows flicking off of the walls between the stalagmites and stalactites, and with your shadows uh, enlarged against the walls. Now, Virgil, you see as well. 
Every now and then, the shadows do seem to move on their own. Oh, that's upsetting. Is the shadow the thing? Can there be a thing without a shadow? Additionally, Jay Quees, you do hear a bit of those familiar whispers tickling the back of your mind. Gosh, dang it. I whisper to myself. (laughs) Can I make any kind of check to see if I know what this is? I don't know if like Arcana. Mm-hmm. I think it'd have to be Arcana. Cool, because I really like that skill, but it's really useless, useless. in the Pokemon world mm. to some extent. Yeah, mostly. But, like, until you need it. Ooh, you hate to see it. Six plus eight, so... Fourteen? Fourteen. You have no idea cool. anything that, that could scans. be causing this. That scans so No well. idea. I confront you. I confront you. I face not away, but directly towards... Face me if you dare, Shadow. I confront you. As you shout this down the tunnel ahead. I state it. You state it. I look back at Pantora after Jayquist does that and just I'm like, I don't, I don't. She's just got her arms crossed and she just gives you a shrug of, you boys do you. (laughs) As you declare that down this hallway. (laughs) In the, in the flickering torchlight, the shadows bouncing off of the walls and things. You see that there are a lot of, uh, you know, sharp um, shadows from the stalagmites, the stalactites. And for a second, you can swear that you see one of those long pointed things sort of move. And you're not sure if it's the torchlight, if it's maybe Juniper was out and one of her vines was going around and perhaps making some sort of strange shadow. Juniper's back here with me. Oh, then it's probably not her making the vine. You do see. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> I feel awful about it. I place my hand on Virgil's forehead. Confront it. <laughs> I'm actually possessed. <laughs> it comes out. Virgil, you also, as he makes the declarative statement, you see not one of Juniper's tentacles, but yeah. one of these shadows does not seem to be a stalagmite or a stalactite shadow, but something almost tentacle, like a shadow. Tendril-esque. However, you do not see any tendrils or tentacles or anything in the room, just a phantom, just a shadow against the wall. <laughs> okay, well, I'm 12, and this is pretty much the second scariest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> so I'm gonna try really hard to not pee on myself. That's, that's my character <laughs> at this point. Have fun confronting. I'm going to try and not wet my pants. I, I, I'm i feeling something at the back of my tickly psyche. You still feel that dark presence as... Uh, dark. In the same way that you, you felt the whispers before. Uh, you've, you've spoken with the wretched beast. You've heard the whispers of the people that you know in, in your head and everything. This seems like a, a multitude of uh, feminine whispers that just sort, sort, seem to be calling out to you, reaching to you. And you cannot comprehend the words, though. Speak to me in the light if you dare. And I send Drapion back and bring out Adeline. You do so as you put the Drapion in the uh, transfer mechanism, the arcane device, and this bolt of energy goes flying out of the butt. I didn't want to send it in the middle of the night in case it started eating people. I wanted Kieran, like, rough and ready to go in the day. Yeah, Yeah. no. The arcane bolt flies into your hand, and you're sort of, like, jolted for a second as just the sheer speed that it has come back with. You now have Adeline. Jake, please? Yeah. Who did you get? And she sprouts from the nut. The Terrified. big cat really bursts trying not forth. to pee my pants. We're in a dark cave with shadows, and the cats that tried to kill us are here. As you stand here in the cavern, uh, awaiting to confront whatever this is, more of the shadows begin to move around the entrance to the hallway to go further down the tunnels. It's beckoning us. You do feel a compulsion. I confront thee, and I does, walk forward. Does Ellie seem to like the sense coming from farther deeper in? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's almost like this entire sequence was crafted by a higher higher mind. I'm going to give to Adeline to hold a little citrus berry. I give Juniper her miracle seed back. And with that, you descend. 